Let's talk about the money, dude. If Ethereum developer, Solidity developer, they're coding for half a year, one year, how much money are they making? High end is is nuts, dude. Like 150, 170. But yeah. dude, I, dude, I've seen I've seen shit for like 500 plus tokens. What it do, what it does, be you being where you was, but it ain't what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know what's up, guys? How's it going? This is Kazi. Today we got the man in the house, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, the Solidity God. Ooh, Solidity God. That's my title. I'm with it. What's up, Kazi? How are you, man? I'm here. How we doing? <laughs> Let's go. So I'm super excited to have Patrick on today. Patrick, if you don't know, he just I, how I found him is he dropped this tutorial on YouTube. It hit two million views on Free Code Camp. Woo! Yes, sir. And he's also a content creator. He's a beast. Uh, super grounded guy as well, and just really fun to talk to. And uh, today, I pretty much want to talk with Patrick about um, Web3, crypto, DeFi, and um, probably everything in between. So, Patrick, yeah. welcome on board, brother. Hey, Kazi, uh, great to be here. And, and like we were chatting a little bit before we started filming, but yeah, dude, your, your channel is fantastic. I was telling him when we started filming, I was like, yo, like when you go live, you keep the energy up. Like, that's what I'm about. I'm about. And yeah, we, uh, we, we had a, what, a Zoom call maybe during like Eat Denver or something. And it, it was so funny because uh, there, there's a lot of people that I talked to very, very serious, very, but like we just started ripping right away, which was, uh, which was cool. Like, yo, what the fuck? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we'll be fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. we'll be crazy. <laughs> because even when I look at your channel, it's fun to look at. And most <coughs> content creators me, keep shit so boring. Um, I mean, not content creators. Let me not say content creators because they're going to come and shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think with a lot of developers I meet in the ecosystem, they want to be like really professional and really yeah. serious. Yeah. Um, and um, and I don't know. Like I'm I'm just Dude. I'm very I'm very anti corporate. You know, we're we're like the Peter McKinnons of the coding world. I feel like. Dude, I, I have I have empirical evidence that this style of education, this style of like edutainment yeah. almost is is better. So yeah. when I was first making videos, I got a ton of people DMing me. I'm um, saying, Yo, dude, you need to like stop all that silly shit like just 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 get on the screen like code and like shut the hell up and i was like i was like i know for a fact like when i'm learning i'm like yeah. if that shit is like i'm falling asleep if that shit's if that's how it is so so what i ended up doing is i i released two videos back to back exact yeah. same content it was about like um asynchronous programming in python mm. um didn't blast them out didn't do anything the one one of them i'm like crazy zany like over the top and the other one i'm like shut the fuck up like all right here this is 20 times 20 times the views on the more animated one it's a factor uh -huh. of 20 it's 20 times more impactful to like do the style of content that you do yeah. um and that's the empirical level. so yeah dude it's, we're same page the higher and it's more fun <laughs> yeah i mean i agree it's like pe people want to be entertained right why are they on youtube mm. like they can just be reading like an encyclopedia book on the technology you know like right they're they're sure. here because most people want to be entertained. Like Joma Tech, who's one of the creators, I really uh, I really love, um, yeah. and I, he's doing some really unique shit now. And I actually bought two of his. Uh, oh, uh, did the NFTs that he dropped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, nice. This is not a condoning of buying that shit. Really. <laughs> financial. Not financial advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna. Well, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say jo Joma Tech is uh, he's he's super entertaining, right? Super entertaining. Yeah. He's a little bit different than what like you and I do. Like you're like more like yo, here's how you code this stuff with that high energy. He's he's a lot or, or he's a lot more like entertaining stuff. Although I think he has done he's done classes a lot in the past. Classes, he has yeah. okay. He even was selling like his own courses around data yeah, structures, yeah, yeah. algorithms, um, and now he launches NFT and. Uh, yep. His main purpose behind that NFT is so the community essentially it's like crowd funding for him, so the community can fund him, so he can like mm. keep creating videos and content. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think that's that's what it is. You know, I, I think like, I think that's like a million dude in like ten minutes. Dude, yeah, he was like, yeah, we sold out right away. Which I, I mean, I'm pumped for him. I think that that's fantastic, right? Like, I I think his style of content's really cool, and um, yeah, however. However, he can monetize that great. Like that's a great use case for blockchain. There you go, right? Sliding right into the blockchain conversation there too. Yeah, yeah, I th yeah, I, th I mean, it's pretty great. I mean, f honestly though, one thing I have been thinking about is I've been watching a lot of Mr. Beast shit. 
Dude, his content. Yeah, I every single video he drops, I watch. Are you serious? I, okay, so let me tell mm -hmm. you, dude. I'm getting so fucking excited. Like, I'm actually thinking about, dude. I should be talking to you outside of this podcast too. Dude, <laughs> shit. Brainstorming on. We need to be sinking because because I'm on the same like anytime. So like so uh, so I work at Chainlink Labs, right? Yeah. And uh, we have a bunch of DAs, right? So we make we make content. Um, we kind of change. It, it's it's a little bit different though. But any single anytime someone's like, "Yo, what should I do for a video or for like presentation?" I always say like, "This is something Mr. B said once." He was like, "Don't give the audience time to ask, am I bored right now?" Yeah. Like, don't let them don't let them be bored, right? Because if they're bored, that's when they that's when they bounce off and uh, and like it it's it does a disservice to them. Like if you're yes being so boring that they leave like you're not getting them like especially for what we're doing we're not able to teach them as effectively dude so like yes, at every single every single mr beast video i'm like yo this is a this is a workshop on how to like make good content and i'm always trying <laughs> we're on the same page although you've done a lot better than me I'm, I'm i'm always trying to tweak my shit to be more mr beast like but um but basically yeah man so i think like mr b stuff I, so i'll tell you this i'm like actually studying it hardcore now like i'm okay studying it so what i mean mm -hmm. by that is like his last video was like i built um uh so it, it was um world's so, most dangerous escape room uh he, he dropped one two days ago yeah, you're behind yeah, the you curb. just swim with sharks no, no no i watched that one too would you swim oh, okay, with okay. Sharks? and i'm like i saw <laughs> yeah, yeah. the thumbnail i'm like that is genius i yep. saw the title i'm like that's fucking genius yep. um I, I, and um uh yeah and then even like when i ran into him um, and I asked him and he like looked at my phone and he told me my thumbnails were shit. And I was like, yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to keep working on it. But like, yeah, his, so the, would you swim? And then the world's most dangerous escape room. So I started studying uh -huh. it. I'm like the hook lasts from zero to seven seconds. Dude. I all like, so the, 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 the one, um, the one before he did the, I'm getting chased by the military or something like that. His yes. hook was nine seconds. And I yes. was like, oh my God, he's making it shorter. I literally, yes. same dude, same page. Holy shit. That's, yep. This, Sorry. Keep going. That's what I'm saying. Like, so I'm on, like this year, I'm really excited uh -huh. about working on some really big videos that get viral. Like they go viral yep. in the mm -hmm. tech space but people don't even need to understand it. So like one of the ideas that I was having, and I guess I'll just brainstorm some of it with you here. Cause I was like, Hell um, yeah. one of the things I thought about is like turning it into a game show, um, mm. like a game show for developers. So no, not many people like Joma tech is doing the fictional side, mm -hmm. right? Like he's doing the side where um, he has like these fictional videos or not fictional. I don't know what the term is, but it's like, he's making up these short films and stories. Right. I would want to do like, um, so I thought of the hook and my hook was like, um, I built the world's hardest JavaScript challenge. And if this developer can solve it in one hour, oh, he wins $10,000. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> super sick. Cause when you, <laughs> dude, when you said game show, I actually like, uh, a part of me was like, ah, like game show. Like yeah. there's somebody like, Hey, welcome to the game. And they're like, yeah. they're super boring. They got in, but that, but that hook right there, <laughs> that was sick. That got me amped. That got me excited. Oh, that's sick. That's dude. what I'm saying. So I'm thinking about doing something like that where like we can get developers. Like, so say, mm -hmm. say on the next Yo. one, we do, you know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. the world's hardest blockchain challenge. And if this developer just like dude. we have you fly in, we have the challenges set up for you, right? And then once mm -hmm. you do these 10 challenges, yep. you win X prize, but it's like there are obstacles in the way. Right. I don't know. I just thought it was <laughs> they got to like run laptop to laptop, like solving like, dude, because because that was the other thing I was like, how do you make how do you make like the coding stuff entertaining? Like, yes. like, so so we've done we've done um we've done speed coding for like chain link hackathons, right? Where uh, yeah. developer shows up, they they like we, we give them some random task and then whoever finishes it first wins. Those yeah. are exciting for me because I'm like, you know, I, I see like all the different solidity techniques they're using and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh cool. nice. Yeah. But like, but somebody who's maybe a little bit newer isn't going to really yeah. know what's, or I, I, I like to think about like, uh, like League of Legends, for example. If you don't play yeah. League of Legends, if you try to watch League of Legends, Dude. it just looks like a cluster so, F. <laughs> bro, it's, it's so fun to watch, even though I'm not, I don't really, really? play. Really? And I'm not good at all, but I watched that shit, bro. Really? Like, I was on the Twitch uh, thing watching it uh -huh. yesterday. I watch chess really? all the time. I love chess. I play competitive okay. Okay. chess. But like oh, chess, nice. is, but, but it has nothing to do with League. So I like sometimes mm -hmm. watch chess streams, but League I have no idea, right? And I'm watching League. I went on Twitch, started watching League, 
Uh-huh. And it is so entertaining. They'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, he's Patrick's really? in the middle lane and he's about to gank him. What? And the dragon comes and oh, like, oh shit. Like it's so I get hyped really? and I kind of get what's happening. So I feel like League of Legends gets mm. a lot of viewership. But I'll tell you why. I think even if people don't really know it, they can still mm. watch it because they get people get killing. There's like mm-hmm. two people killing right. each other. Right, right, right. Um, they get money, people are getting coins. Yep. Um People get the concept of like one person outsmarting the other. So when you involve commentary, right. I think the energy of the commentary makes it exciting. But if you didn't have the commentary, you'd be like, what the hell am I watching? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting to me because cause so I, I played, I have played way too much League of Legends. So when I watch League of Legends, the whole time I'm like, oh shit, like, oh my God, like I don't need, I don't need the commentary because I like see what's going on. I mean, I do appreciate yeah. the commentary, but that's crazy. I, I never thought that people like who didn't know the game because like... League? Dude, I, I I played a a way too much league. I I've quit. I I, I only gonna, play I for one say, week. I was gonna say this. I don't really play league, but some people from our team play league, like oh, clever no. programmer. And so mm. like tonight, I told mm-hmm. them guys, let's link up and let's play. Oh so my god. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I I I quit, dude. I was uh, <laughs> I I was bad. I that, that's like all I would do. I would like <laughs> I would finish work. I would play league. So I I've I've been quit. I've been sober for quite some time. Um, <laughs> but, but I, one week out of the year, I'll play, like, I'll you wake like, up turn at, into a gambler when you like play league, dude, like, you turn into a, like a awful human being. Dude, I don't, <laughs> uh, in the beginning I was an awful human being. I'm a lot, uh, I, I like to think I'm a pretty nice player now, even when people are being toxic, but, uh, um, no, dude, no, like there's, <laughs> um, I, one week out of the year I play, I wake up at 8 AM. I go to bed at 8 AM the next day. I sleep for 16 hours and like when I'm awake, all I'm doing is playing, playing league. And that's like, that's like a vacation for me. And then uh, my girlfriend, go. my girlfriend like looks at me sideways and goes, really? Like, this is what you want to do? And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dude, I, I come from like a gaming background. So I, okay. I used to oh, do, really? Yeah. Like, so I used to do competitive gaming ever since I was like 11 or 12 years old, like even younger than what? that. I played RTS games like Command and Conquer, General Zero Hour, Warcraft, Frozen Throne. Uh, what years of war i was ranked number three in the world for a whole month what what mirror's edge i was ranked number one holy shit um wow yeah i played games like all the fucking time dude it was like i would be playing 17 hours a day 18 hours a day when i was younger oh my uh, god barely sleeping my best 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 summer ever was me and my best friend he would just come over all the time and we would play borderlands just grind borderlands really yeah. So you're you're kind of like the same thing that I did, except for you're you're doing it a lot better. You you took all that that energy that like oh yo I'm gonna play until like I can't like keep my eyes open anymore, and then just put it into like YouTube and, and coding and all that stuff. That's yeah, that's what I did. Coding became like the thing. Coding like literally felt like it was a video game, and then people paid me, and I was like, this yep. is fucking stupid. Like, don't be paying. Me. Like, <laughs> I should be paying you for this. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, dude i feel that that's how that's how it feels my brother just started coding he's like uh he has like an an exercise science background and he just started coding he was like yo this is like low-key kind of fun and i was like that's what i'm saying <laughs> just like getting over that like hump to like figure it out and then you have like all this creativity and you can do all this crazy crazy shit and then you can do yeah weird tutorials like what like i'm gonna create uber on the blockchain or, or whatever your last video was yeah dude like <laughs> agreed yeah. same page same yeah. exact page but yeah now we're now we're definitely doing that where it's like okay let's start building crazy shit that people like yeah um but but definitely the side that i want to explore so i'm like kind of giving myself a goal and this is a crazy goal like there's probably three percent chance of me succeeding in it but the goal is so it took us five years to get to one million subs but this year, mm-hmm. my goal is to get to two million subs. Ooh, ooh, you're you're uh, you're preaching that goal out in public, huh? Yeah. Okay. And there's like okay, only only nine months left, um. So there's not much time left, and so basically, I have to be hitting like hundred thousand subs per mm. month or more. Dude, you're at one point one right now, though. Oh, and you you started doing more shorts too. Yeah, I did. Mix it in. I'm with I, it a little. I did a Gary little... V one. People liked it. Oh shit! You got Gary V on here too. I got no, 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 fake. Uh, I, I did a Gary V parody. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. TikTok. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, TikTok. <laughs> like, my app loads slow as fuck. I want my users to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, I love Gary V. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like people, I got tons of positive feedback on that. So like, mm -hmm. I, I'm like trying to, so what I'm trying to do is, uh, I'm going to start doing lots of shorts and reels just because it t it's very quick to produce something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I'm getting lots of positive feedback, then I think I'm going to turn it into longer form. So it's like, imagine a YouTube mm. video five minutes oh. long, and it's just like if Gary V uh, tried coding for one day. Mm -hmm. And it's just a parody, you know? Right. But, like, then the question then becomes, does that style, does that, if you like using the shorter ones, it's like a signal, it's like an indicator, right? Yeah. Maybe that style of content only works for the shorts. Um, yeah, it's possible. But like, there's a Captain Sinbad who did like uh, watches Grant Cardone once, or watches Gary Vee once, and then he like turns into G Grant Cardone or whatever, mm -hmm. and then that's like almost two million views. What? Um, yeah, Joma text because like what I realize is stuff with parodies and things that are funny or inter mm -hmm. really entertaining, people yeah. watch it, and so it has high watch time. And right. then YouTube just keeps recommending the shit out of it like crazy, you know, like Mr. B says shoot for on your. OK, let me ask you this on your YouTube yeah. analytics. Do you know what's your average retention, like average percentage watched on like some of your recent videos? Uh, I haven't been uh, I'm, I haven't been grinding the YouTube stats as nearly as much as y'all have. I, oh, I'm, no, no. Yeah, I you have, have no, no idea. No idea. Yeah. I'll tell you it, with tutorials and shit. It's like 10 percent or lower is what I've realized. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. pretty low. Uh, my long tutorials are at 1%, 2%. Makes um, sense. and some of my best, my best videos, like with 2 million views are 35% watched. Really? Unwatched. Yeah. Like top five programming languages to learn in 2021 mm -hmm. or whatever. So 2020, they got like 2 million views, 38% mm -hmm. watched, uh, Mr. Beast. He's like, uh, he, he, his, he says he tries to never drop anything that will hit below 70% retention. What? And we're, we're hitting like between, I'm probably hitting between one and 10. You're hitting between 10 and 35. It's fucking crazy, dude. Uh, that's, that's, that sounds like Mr. Beast. So the, yeah. the hard thing that I, I have like trying to figure out though, is because most of the stuff that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to like, and mean? then maybe this, yeah, like, well, because because my my whole thing, like everything that I'm like doing in my life right now is like, all right, how do I get how do I figure out how to like share this amazing technology and like get coders as excited as me uh, yeah. and like and like teach it right because there's so like few good, really solid like people who like really understand Solidity, really understand smart contracts. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm like always feeling like, OK, I got to like I got to I got to sh show them how to do this new code thing. But like maybe yeah. the strat is what you're saying, like mix in more like which i have been um but it's like it's it's not my focus as much i don't yeah. know what what are your thoughts there I, i'm torn i'm i'm in i've been torn for the last half a decade five years i've right. been doing this and i've been like do i go more entertainment and like mm -hmm. mass and viral do i focus more on like niching down and staying focused on this and i'm like if i don't teach this then who am i like weird shit like that but then I was like thinking about it, and I'm like, it's like a YouTube existential crisis, almost. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who like, am I? <laughs> yeah, who am I if I'm not a teacher? <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm so nobody. I thought, I thought about it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's true. That if I don't do this, you know, it changes kind of my niche, and it can be scary for the YouTube algorithm, things like that. But mm -hmm. then I thought about like, what's my goal? My goal is to get as many people into the world of coding as possible. Like whether it's Web three or Web two, I don't care. Like as long as right. people can get into the coding. And so I feel like if if I have videos that get massive, like millions of viewers, inter That's, like yeah. thinking like you're okay, let me tell it to you like this. When you were young and you had you had that like cool fucking professor, just because a professor was cool and you fucked with a professor, you wanted to become what whatever he or she did. Yeah, you, know? you make a good point, yeah. Yeah. Um, rappers move entire industries and like create new genres just because like they are like what they're dropping. Lots of people fuck with it, and then they mm. want to like be what they are or follow their path or their journey. And so I'm like, if I go mass appeal, people will still come and watch my tutorials. I think that makes a lot of sense, bro. I need more time in the day. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. I um plus it's just interesting like creatively challenged yeah. like it's a uh, more than yeah anything, yeah yeah above anything it's just like when i look at your content and you're doing you're pushing yourself creatively more than anything for me it's just like a really interesting creative challenge 
that's a really interesting way to look at it. Like, how do I, oh, that's really interesting, right? The, the, how do I, how do I get people excited about this thing? Um, while also making sure to deliver like the impactful content and then how creative can I be to hit both of those goals? Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, those were just a couple of things that I thought about. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, other than that, I think overall our focus is how, you know, let's let's teach people about blockchain. Let's teach people about yeah. um, crypto dude. more. Let's teach people about Web3 more. So that's what yeah. we've been focusing on now. Which is which is phenomenal, right? The more people who can understand this technology, the better. Um, it, it, we are... Like, people keep saying, like, we're early, but, like, the thing is, I feel like they don't really realize, like, how early we are. Like, oh, shit. Like, well, because if you, if you think about it, like, there's still, like, what what is the market cap of, like, hedge funds? Like, several hundred trillion dollars, right? Like, or, or some, like, that. I, we could probably Google it. It's, like, it's some insane number, right? And crypto, all of crypto combined is, like, what, like, two trillion or something like that? Oh, like, wow. we're this tiny fragment of like, like this whole old centralized way of doing things. And we, there's just like, so, so, so like any, and what I'm trying to say is see what you're saying. thank you for your blockchain work and uh, excited yeah. to, to keep bringing people in. Cause yeah, like we have this, yeah. this, um, this issue of like, okay, like, do we trust all these institutions that have like just continued to fuck people in the past? Yeah, I, I mean, we can, but we have a technology that makes it so we don't have to. So why don't we just use that? Yeah. Um, like one of the things that I thought about and, and tell me kind of what your, your thoughts are on this. But I think I spoke about this a little bit over the phone, but we can go more on this. So like one of the times, you know, people there are a lot of hot buzzwords in the blockchain world, like decentralized and a bunch of other things, which if you don't really know what it means, it just sounds like buzzwords. But right. kind of one of the times it hit me is. um when I saw kind of what was happening in Russia recently, where the ruble was dropping like crazy, and these people were going and they're like, yo, the ruble value is dropping like crazy. We need to go and exchange this for something else. And when they went to exchange it, like they had just blocked off the exchanges. They basically just told them like, no, you can't exchange it. And so basically mm -hmm. I kind of realized like, oh shit, that's the dangerous part about having centralized exchanges and centralized control. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they had their money in crypto, like let's just say it was like crypto rubles, you know, the USDC equivalent of rubles, um, mm -hmm. they could just like liquidate and go into any other token or any other thing and do that instantly and nobody could stop them in the world. Yeah, it's, it's like one of these just crazy superpowers that crypto gives us. Right. It's this yeah. thing where it says, hey, like there are people who want to screw you over. And um, it's 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 so tricky because, right, like the winners write history. Right. So like who is right is usually by, you know, but there's a good chance that, you know, there have the the people who should have won were on the losing side and, and they got screwed over. And uh, yeah. technology like this would have would have saved that. So uh, yeah. but yeah, no, you're, you're spot on, man. Like, uh decentralized exchanges i feel like are are one of these things that like we've solved and it's it's crazy to me like that um that uh, well it's not crazy to me there, there's this learning gap that we need yeah. to get over but it's crazy to me that we're not all like holy shit how do we get yeah. this like faster and i know there's a ton of people excited about it and i know there's a ton of incumbents who are less excited about it but um yeah, now we're now we're like you. You're gonna get me ranting here, Kazi, if you don't it, cut me off. It's perfect. It's it's great. I I do. Mm -hmm. I, I think ranting on this is great because it's something mm -hmm. important for people to hear, right? So like for example, um, something else that I've been super excited about is recently mm -hmm. I started working with like Web three companies and they have been paying in in like crypto, and uh, and it's like three minutes mm -hmm. or two minutes and you you get paid and I'm like, what is this? Yep. This is so weird. This is so crazy. Yep. And so I, it kind of hit me. I'm like, it's like now it, the money is not this like traditional ancient bank money where like mo your money's sleeping on a Saturday and a Sunday. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> how does yep. that make any sense? First of yep. all, like if money is the most important thing, just have somebody on the Saturday and Sunday shift. So they're running the money stuff like it, I don't get it, right? <laughs> but then, like with crypto, you could send it twenty four seven. You get everybody yep. gets it within a couple of minutes, which is mm -hmm. huge. 
Um, some examples, even some of my own team members, they're like, when they get paid, because if sometimes if it takes five days or seven days for them to get paid, they have to they pay their they end up paying their rent late, which means they start getting all these fees. Mm -hmm. But if my team was getting paid in crypto, they would get their money right away, right? And mm -hmm. there's no stopping it. But one fear I will tell you is Love it. it was fucking weird for me to get paid in crypto. Dude, I was like scared. I was like, they're gonna be just paying me in this like MetaMask wallet that i have <laughs> and it, it's like it's just a it's a chrome fucking extension that i'm depending my whole life on <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm like yeah, it's yeah, yeah so shaky and flaky and it could just die what if i forget the mnemonic password like how would i log into my phone to get this money um you know and then i have to learn about non-custodial wallets and they're like it's a if it's a non-custodial wallet no wait 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 let me let me jump in there like fuck that yeah. like take yeah. that term out of your dictionary okay that is that is some marketing bullshit to like say like oh like non-custodial wallets are like worse <laughs> or like no there's there's it's not non-custodial wallets it's just your fucking wallets you got yeah. the private key it's your yeah. it's your token right like because what are they saying like custodial wallets are like shit that's kyc'd fuck yeah. that like that yeah. is some marketing shit uh don't uh, let don't don't uh this this is my like this is me speaking from within now don't fucking yeah. say that shit anymore non custodial <laughs> wallets that it's it's like the the reason the reason that the reason i think that that terminology came about was there was this huge push you know from governments they want to kyc all that shit so they started yeah. saying like non custodial wallets as if like that's the worst one as if custodial is like the norm yeah. so which is which is a bunch of bullshit totally antithesis of what blockchain is yeah um but yeah, and and then there's stuff like that happening. So this is a perfect. There's stuff like that happening where it's like, oh, like I got to learn about non-custodial versus custodial. Like, oh, fuck that shit. Like there, <laughs> but but agreed. There's there's a lot of like user experience stuff that needs to improve, right? Like the fact yeah. that you're like, if I forget my private key, I'm screwed. Yeah, uh, I do think there are a lot of people where like a service, like some type of managed service, even though again that's the antithesis of blockchain, yeah. might be helpful for. Um, yeah, I think I think multi sigs are a good approach there because. Uh, if you forget and you have like r two really close people to you who are on the multi sig, then great, like it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I agree. There's definitely still like a curve um, to make it easier for the masses to adopt. Oh, so that that's you don't have cool. that. So like on multi sig, yeah. what I could do is like I could have two of my brothers put in their passwords, right? And then like if I ever need to access it, worst case scenario, yep. forget everything. Both of my brothers can a a a put it in and. Yeah, or like a or like a recovery wallet, basically. Yeah, you say, uh, hey, like I I can do keys. These are like the cool thing about smart contracts is you can code it to do whatever you want it to do. So um, yeah, you can do stuff like that. But but agreed, it's like there is this like um, kind of like you know even, I've done it a ton now. Sometimes when I send crypto, I'm still like okay, like <laughs> hopefully I sent it to the right address. Yeah, but, that's what uh, I'm yeah. saying. That like yeah. that that whole thing would like hopefully sent it to the right address, like. I really wish they had better solutions around that because that's like a really weird one. It's like you yeah, feel because I... currently with the way that I send money, like going into the Web2 world, I feel really secure. I know 99 percent of the times like, you know, uh, when I'm sending it is going to get sent there when I pop in my brother. Like, let's say if it's PayPal, um, mm. I'm sending it to his email address. It auto completes his email address. His photo shows up like I'm sure right. it's the same dude. Well, you so know. the thing is, like stuff like that, like Takes can time. be built, and it's like, uh -huh. yeah, like I mean, like one of the uh, the steps in that direction is we have ENS now, Ethereum name service, yeah. and like yeah. if I'm if I want someone to send me ETH, I say, hey, like Patrick Alpha C dot ETH, right? And so, boom, yeah. you can just send it to like my domain almost, which Got I think it. is like a, it's a much easier, like much more friendly approach uh, to sending stuff. So I I think we're getting there, yeah. Um, but we'll we'll need more, and again, like. The crazy thing is, like, what Ethereum came out in 2015, 2014, 2016, one of those oh, days. Wow, right? That's pretty recent. And yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's like this is new. This is really yeah, new. I mean, Bitcoin was, um, wow, I'm forgetting all my dates now, 2009? Something. Yeah, I think so. 2011? 2009? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. was Bitcoin. <laughs> 2009. I'm embarrassed myself. Yeah. 2009. Okay. All right. I got it. All right. We're, we're, we're good. When was um, it created? Yeah. created? Let's see. 2015. I, I think they announced 2014 or something, but I mean, dates or whatever. Um, uh -huh. 
but yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there, Kazi. There, there's a lot of stuff to do, and uh, and that's why I'm so we're early. We're, we're early, and I'm so on the fucking train of like teaching yeah. people how to build this crazy shit. Because yeah, like we can move towards this world where you can kind of like do shit. You can like just have access to the markets. To me, that's like like yeah. wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Like you can you can be a part of like you financing. Don't need to be like an accredited investor to invest. Oh my companies. god, dude! Yeah, like right. Ugh. Yep, you um, don't have to be. A, yeah. Which just means like we're gonna allow rich people to get richer most of the time. Yep. Because, uh, <laughs> yep. When a company is IPOing or whatever, yep. they get they get to get in at the best pricing. Yep. You, you, the the accredited investor is like, all right, if you're already filthy rich and you want to get richer, get cheaper. <laughs> if you're yep. filthy and, rich, you can get in for cheaper. <laughs> and if you don't have money, you have to pay fifty times that. Fuck well, you. It's, it's I, mean, I I understand what the idea is. It's like, oh well, if you. If you're not a credit investor, <laughs> maybe you're, this is going to sound crazy. Maybe you're, you don't have the experience. Oh, that's a better way of saying it. Maybe you don't have the experience to do that. But to me, like part of me is like, it's like, oh, like they're, they're thinking I'm too fucking stupid to yeah. like, to invest in this thing. Come on. Like, it's like, let me, ugh, yeah. Um, like a government shouldn't, I feel like a government shouldn't be allowed to make that decision for you. Like they allow gambling. You know what I Dude. mean? Dude. Like, allow all <laughs> this shit. Like so, how are you deciding this is the thing that like I don't get to invest into a company, but I can go and gamble dude, in Vegas. Dude, I I think about this all the time because I'm like, yo, like, so I so I worked at a hedge fund for a couple of years, and I was like, all right, like, did? what's, yeah, dude, I worked at a hedge fund for oh, a couple of years. Dude, that Crazy. Makes sense because... Or or excuse me, an asset manager, asset manager. Okay, but like this is same thing because yeah, you I feel like you know so much about like crypto or like just the money stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was crazy because I like uh, I joined the the company because I wanted to learn it, you know, more about coding. I was new in my career, and I was fascinated by like how big money works. And I was like, well, I want to learn how that how how does the world work, basically, in, uh, in like another yeah. in another sense. And then I'm like, all right, what's the secret sauce? And yeah. like, you know, it, it the my takeaway from like, and I read a ton of books, and like I worked here, and I talked to all these people who worked at like different groups. My takeaway was that they're basically like running a ton, a ton of software to guess what is going to go up and guess what is going to go down. Uh. And that's it. And I'm like, that's the same thing. If I go to fucking casino and I go roll a roulette ball and I'm guessing it's going to be black or white. And like, yes. I'm like, it's, it's like gambling with like way more steps. And now th that isn't totally fair. That isn't yeah. totally fair. Um, it, it's definitely not totally fair. And, yeah. um, I think there are a lot of financial institutions that do do right. And that do do good things. So I, I don't want to, I want to just do do, do, -do. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, knew, I knew this was a good, good, uh, good call to get on we, uh, room temperature IQs over here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, dude. I'm I'm back. I'm back in fifth grade. This is great. Um, talking about like big money hedge funds and shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So so some of them like do do <laughs> yeah. God. What the fuck, Kazi? Um, they, they do they do like uh, actually like help the investors and 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 help them like get into um, places to save their money to save their value, right? Because in my mind, that's what investing is. It's to like save your value. Mm. Um, but there's there's a lot of them that what their goal is is it's you know it's a zero sum game if you're winning somebody else is losing figure out any little way to like screw somebody else over and it's it's just guessing right and it's yeah and that's one of the things that's that's really frustrating to me and is that there's um there's yeah like you said there's a lot of people who are allowed to play this guessing game to play this gambling game and there's a lot of people yeah. that aren't and it's 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 really frustrating so but but I, I again I want to make it perfectly clear. That I'm yeah. not shitting on the entire uh, financial industry, no, but I am shitting on some of them. To no, be to right. be quite frank, because yeah. yeah, it's it's um, a ton of them. They're just like they they get they get paid a shit ton of money to guess with right. a ton with a ton of charts and shit, and they're just yeah. guessing. I feel like I mean another thing as you were talking, I started thinking about, it, and I'm like, what another thing that Web three and this blockchain world is allowing us to do is, um. You know, first of all, you don't need, you know, so just in layman's terms, if we could just bring it down. So yeah, what this basically means is, let's say a company like uh, Tesla. 
if it was in the traditional world, you can't, you weren't as a normal person, you, the viewer who's watching it, who, who's probably not an accredited investor. If you are, mm -hmm. that's fucking great. But like, if you're not, <laughs> um, probably what happened is when, when Tesla, like, you know, was private company or whatever, you couldn't invest in it. But the co-founder of like Twitch uh, or t not Twitch, but like companies like Twitter or whatever probably could. Yeah, you know? don't, don't, shit, don't shit on him like that. You just had him on your, uh, he's a great dude. No, great I mean, dude, like, I'm not shooting on him. Like he's getting know, into these companies because he's rich as fuck, and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but, so like, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. So it's like they, they, they could all, they could all get in early, but like you can't get in early. But if it was in the Web three or blockchain world, it's mm. very likely that if like Tesla launched, they would have a Tesla token that goes alongside it, and from day one, mm -hmm. you could have been like an investor if you believed in it. Yeah. Now, Kazi, to me, the, the biggest thing here, like, like, because even in crypto, like those guessing, excuse me, those guessing games are going to happen. Those groups yeah. that are just playing, you know, which which is fine, because, again, I, I think there are a lot of them that do um, do well, do do yeah. right by investors. They're really trying to get a return and like save people's value. And I, and I do think a lot of these financial products are really important. Yeah. However, to me, the bigger thing, the crazy thing is um, information asymmetry. And to me, that is like one of these things that blockchain really just like nails okay. in. Like, explain what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so have you heard of Flash Boys before? Nope. Okay, cool. So, back in the early two thousands, right? There was kind of the, the, or maybe late nineties. I, I forget the actual date, but uh, there were a lot of these high frequency trading firms popping up, mm -hmm. right? And um, they made a movie about this. I think it's called like butterfly or something like that um where basically they like uh what was happening was whoever's server was closer to like the nasdaq or, or like the different exchanges could like send trades quicker and screw uh -huh. other people over so yeah. they would like see somebody somebody's about to make a trade right and basically front run them right so oh, okay uh -huh. you're about to buy a bunch of bunch of this thing okay i'm gonna buy it first sell it back to you um and just like all this this kind of Again, because it's a zero sum game, everyone's looking for like the edge, the thing to like fuck over the other person. And yeah. um, what it ended up doing was it, it just like everyone's getting wrecked by these people who are just have this new technology because they have this information asymmetry. They they're closer mm -hmm. to the to the servers. They have uh, they're faster, whatever. And it kind of it it doesn't really make for like a fair market. Like how is it fair? that because your computer is like a foot closer to where they run the transactions that you're getting better deals. Like, yeah. I don't, that's not fair at all. That's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's stuff like this that happens all the time. And, um, and even more so, uh, like when people make deals or when people, I, mean, I, would, uh, I would, I would, okay. So I will, go ahead. I would kind of play the devil's advocate and also go, please. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. I would also go, nothing is fair like that's how people find their edge in business and things mm -hmm. because they find the unfair thing or whatever that gives them that edge not in an unethical mm -hmm. way but maybe that's so it's like why don't you just find a way to get closer to the data center maybe that's the thing they thought about you know that maybe a lot of people didn't think about but we keep going i'm listening I, I'm no listening. It, it's that that's a great point i mean uh the, the counter argument then is like okay, wait, well not everybody can be closest there can only I, be one closest that's true. Um, but that's true. But then the but then the other thing to think about is okay. Well, imagine this. Imagine two systems, one where there's a one in one million chance of you being the closest one to the server, versus a system where there's perfect information and everyone can see everything. That's true. Which which one are you going to pick? Well, there's right. a one in one million chance of you like being the closest one. So why the fuck would you not pick this one? And this one's blockchain. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, so there's, uh, although like there, there is still front running and all this crazy and MEV and all this shit that happens with blockchain. But the thing I like is that all the information is perfect, right? There's yeah. you, you know, immediately who screwed you, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on. And it's much easier to say, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to do what you just did. Right. Versus like in, in the traditional world that everything happens behind closed doors yeah. or like if a company is going to do um some crazy thing or they're 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 leeching money or they're you know the protocol is you know they're they're going bankrupt or something everything all of that is available on chain there's no right. like there's no like oh like this person knows like 
how much money the protocols made. You can see on chain how much money the protocol or excuse me, the company, right? You can see all this information. And I think that that's crazy. The transparency is crazy, crazy. It's dude, it's like, it's crazy powerful. And then additionally, the biggest thing, the thing that I usually rant about is this, uh, this trust minimization. There's yeah. just fewer entities you have to trust because the code just does its thing, right? You say, hey, like jump it, it jumps, right? It uh, you right. say, hey, like send money, it sends money. There's no. But where does trust minimization yeah. come into play? Yeah, so uh, all over the place. <laughs> um, uh, one of my favorite examples to, that I give because it's like it's pretty easy for people to understand. Uh, have you heard of the McMillian scandal? Uh, this is the McDonald's one that I think you've told me about, right? Yes. Oh, oh, did I tell you about this? Yeah, yeah. 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 So talk about it on here. Okay, yeah. So, so McDonald's they ran this promotion where they were basically like, "Yo, buy our McNuggets and we'll, you know, play our like Monopoly game. We'll give you a chance to win a million dollars." That sounds great. So, yeah. a ton of people they said, "Okay, cool. I'm going to go buy McDonald's because I want to win this lottery, right?" Yeah. In doing so, who were they trusting? McDonald's. They were trusting McDonald's. They were trusting to McDonald's to actually give them a fair chance of winning. And yeah. for years, between like 13 and $24 million, uh, went to like some crime syndicate. And you had a 0% chance of winning, yeah. right? So you were trusting this entity where there was all this like, you know, behind closed doors, like the lottery winners are getting picked behind closed doors. So you were just assuming, you were trusting they were yeah. going to do the right thing. Now you have this system where you're trusting McDonald's to do the right thing versus on the blockchain you have a system where you can see everything that happens yeah and you can see exactly how the random candidates are chosen yeah like why would you why would you yeah. why would you ever use this world why would you ever use so right. there's this this trust because, minimization or yeah and and i think like just so everybody can understand i'm just gonna simplify it for my mind as well oh yeah please yeah, yeah everybody so it's it's almost like McDonald, you're trusting McDonald's. So McDonald's kept choosing this like one crime group, like this one random. And, and to, to 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 put like a little asterisk, it it might not have been McDonald's fault. They hired like you know, sure, but they were still sure. they were still the one saying, right. "Hey, trust us. We yeah. promise we'll give you a fair chance." Yeah. Right. So like we trusted them, but they kept picking like one group instead of giving people an equal chance. But mm -hmm. if it was done with a smart contract on the blockchain. There would literally for developers on here there would literally be like an array and it would be like your array of the people which is everybody that's in the competition so it could be an array <laughs> of a thousand people or a hundred thousand yep. or a million people and it'd be like dot random or whatever right in python you have the i forget but there's like you can import and select from the range and so mm -hmm. it's like you just select random person you could see that code and that's the code that would pick and choose so mm -hmm. the trust minimization that patrick is talking about i think here is like that you're talking about is you don't have to trust McDonald's. You you just see the code. Dude, and, you got it. Yep. And if you can see the code, then you know. And, and that code would be publicly available to everybody that's participating in this challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in Solidity or Viper or whatever, um, because blockchains are deterministic, there's actually no like dot random. You can do pseudo random, which uh. obviously isn't great. Um, but uh, you can use a, a chain like VRF, which is a verifiably random function. And wow. that'll give you like a provably random number, which is kind of mind blowing that you can have a number that's like provably random. Um, it's, it's a cryptographically so random. Yeah, it's it's a little too big brain for me. Yeah, I don't um, even think I understand really how <laughs> random works. Like, I don't even yeah. think I understand how random works. And like, there are certain things that like really blow my fucking mind. Right? It's like, how do you <laughs> write an equation that goes one way and not the other? Like that mm -hmm. always just like hurts yep. my brain so hard. It's like. Yep. You can go one like usually the formula to reverse engineer backwards is like yep. if you wrote the equation, how can it be that hard? <laughs> Dude, math is math is crazy. And then uh, or for, basically for... maybe or basically maybe the idea is you know what the equation is, but in order to like go through the steps of that equation, it's just so computationally challenging that we yep. won't be able to solve it in time. That's the idea, right? And then uh, for for viewers watching, uh, he's he's referring to like hashes or private public key uh, yes, yes, cryptography, yes. which what he just said is literally like the basis of all of cryptography. Like, oh, these algorithms are one way. You can't go. You can, yeah, you, yeah, they're they're well, one you, way, which so is really cool. Basically, you can go the other way, but it just takes really long. That's the idea, right? I I mean, it, it's like is it impossible uh, to go the other way? Well, so, so think of it this way: if you. Dude. If you have, um, 
like a number that's 10 to the, if I'm thinking of a number between zero and two raised to the 220, 256th value, which is like an insanely huge number, yeah. um, g guess which number I'm thinking of. That's kind of the, uh, that's kind of how it works. Like, uh, or, or, or right. bigger or what, so oh, is it, is it impossible? Level, but it's like really just, it's just too it's, it's trial and error. It's just trial and error. Like you just keep guessing yeah. till you get it, which technically isn't impossible, but like what super, it takes supercomputers. If we were like hundreds of thousands of <laughs> or years however in long. the future, we yeah. might have computers that could probably brute force it. Or, or if you waited, or if you had one computer today that <laughs> ran it for like a million years, maybe yeah. it would get one. So that, you know, Dude. if you want to, if you want to steal someone's crypto, imagine that's the short, advice. Like imagine What's, us doing a short or like a video on this, mm -hmm. like, a, like a parody, like one minute thing, like the, uh -huh. crypt, the, the guy who hacked crypto or like broke the algorithm. And it's like, he, he like survives the fucking ice age, the, the <laughs> down. he survives all of that. And he like breaks into a wallet and it only has $1 in it. And then it's like, <laughs> well, he, he should have checked ether scan. That was, that was, a, that was his first mistake. <laughs> yeah. So, but, okay. But, so but go ahead. I, I, I do want to give a quick second example. Uh, cause sure. now you got me, got me going. Go uh, cause it. the, the McDonald's one is kind of like fun or whatever. Um, but a, 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 a better, uh, a more impactful example that I like to give is a, of you trust know, a minimization of, or what trust minimization. Yeah. A ton of people got screwed by Robin hood, right? Robin hood said, so Nope, GameStop can't buy these anymore. What's up? Like where they're like, you can't buy GameStop stocks anymore. Can't buy GameStop stuff anymore. Or the other example I like to give is the 2008 financial crisis, but that might be a longer story. Um, yeah. but with GameStop, they said, you can't buy these anymore. Um, you know, and they even sold some for some people and whether or not it was their fault, it doesn't really matter. Um, they had the ability, the centralized ability to say, nope, we're, we're flipping the switch. You can't do this anymore. Even though they made this promise, Hey, come use our platform. We are democratizing finance. Like that was the promise that they made that, and that they ultimately broke. So, and, and the, uh, <laughs> the joke that was going around the crypto community was, um, there was somebody, they posted like a picture of like a, a transaction on an Etherscan saying, oh, sorry, um, we've we've rejected your transaction because we have the power to do so. And like the joke was like, you can't because the code is immutable. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. So that's a powerful example of it, mm -hmm. you know, where like if you're on um, if you're doing something on Uniswap, for example, you can never get stopped. It's it's you know as long as computers exist and networks exist and. Yep. Like literally it can't be stopped. There's no one entity that can st like cops or the fed can't come in and be like, Hey, shut this down. It's, it's that's like another interesting thing. Cause there was, um, I was listening to a podcast on bankless. Bankless is a really sick podcast. Oh yeah. About... I listened to a little bit of it. Oh too. yeah. Kevin Rose oh, okay. did the one with bankless and I listened to that. Oh yeah. Oh hell yeah. 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 They're, they're great. They're like, um, <laughs> they're like the broiest finance people um no they're they're good though they're 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 good um yeah but uh they, they were talking with one of these guys who's down like in washington and they were talking about like yeah like uh, some guy was like well if we really wanted to we would go around and we would track all the nodes down and take them down and i was like could you do that or or something along those lines and i yeah. was like i i was like how would you how would like you how track down the, the kind of like how they caught the the people who stole 50 billion worth of Bitcoin or something, right? The couple that like tracked all the nodes. Oh there. yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, that was, that was different. They just, uh, they did a poor job hiding their transactions. Uh, got like, it. cause again, everything's transparent. You know, if you make you transactions came, on chain, you think if they came to you and you, somebody who has all this knowledge and like you could like, do you think you could help them get away with it? Cause you're, you're setting me up to get some pretty shady DMS here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's gonna be my that's gonna be my answer to that i'm gonna <laughs> uh, right. i mean i mean to be honest maybe um but i mean there's there's also you know there, there's so much in this like i like to think i know a lot of stuff there's so many people who know way more than me right so maybe there's some weird backdoor i didn't think about that you know, yeah. would, would destroy me, but I, I would definitely probably be able to, to help, but I wouldn't. Um, yeah. that's the thing I'm, right. I'm too busy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to release the next free code camp video, dude. I don't have time to fucking help your shady shit. Yeah. <laughs> not, not you, Kazi, whoever, whoever's, you know, yeah, whoever's, yeah, whoever else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's so. What I'm sorry. What were you saying though? Because I think you were talking about like reverse engineering nodes or something. And, and I. Oh was, yeah, yeah. They were. I forget what it was, and and uh, I feel like I'm just gonna say something stupid because i don't really remember it somebody they were saying like oh like we would hunt down whoever deployed the contract or like we would hunt down like the yeah i'm bank now i gotta rewatch that episode and remember but i was like i was like that sounds ridiculous i don't know if that would be and by i don't know i mean like there's no way like like they haven't even cracked the onion network like how are you gonna what's uh, onion network or or excuse me like tor um excuse me like uh like, like tor like the encrypted um encrypted torrents or something no so tor is like uh i forget what it stands for like the onion router or something like that um it's like a it's basically like an, an anonymous uh way to surf the internet like when you make a request to a website it kind of like scrambles it with other like computers so uh-huh. it's hard to see like where you're coming from oh i, I think see. i think it does i think it does some other stuff too i'm, I'm definitely like not <laughs> I painting in its best just light incognito I forget. Uh, I know. I know a lot about blockchain. The networking stuff, kind of. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Word. Perfect. Yeah. Get get him on the next podcast, and we'll talk tour. Got it. So, like, yeah, yeah, we'll bring him on. Hey, break it, break <laughs> it down the tour part, and he just comes in out of nowhere. <laughs> so, so I think like, okay, so I understand there. There's some parts about decentralization. There's part about some trust minimization. But like, okay, let's talk about like the. Uh, I guess maybe a couple of things we can touch on, and if you ever have to go, just let me know. I don't know. I'm in, I, I'm enjoying the conversation causing. Okay. Yeah. My, uh, I blocked off the rest of the today to code. So it's, it's all good oh, for me. That is nice. That oh, is yeah, a dude. great way to do it, mm-hmm. dude. Cause mm-hmm. like, otherwise you yep. just like, I miss coding and I don't get to code. Oh, that's exciting. It kind of makes me want to. <laughs> dude, uh, well, I was thinking of like, like streaming my coding, but then I'm like, ah, like I've done it before and I'm like, just so much less productive. Cause I'm like talking while I'm coding. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah, when dude, I'm it, playing chess and I'm streaming chess. Like I play much worse. Movies. <laughs> yeah. There. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, dude, if you get a chance to block off some time for coding, it's like, it's great. It's like my favorite part of the day. Dude, that is cool. That is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, if I did blockchain coding, I would jump in. Like if I did like full on maybe your skill level blockchain coding skills, I would jump in with you. But I'll I'll help you with the dude. full stack. Dude, you need full stack. Dude, like we just, in the same. We could be in the same Visual Studio code on collab. Dude, I'd just be whipping yo, up the front end, bro. <laughs> Wait, how sick? If I'm like if I'm like writing all the back end shit and you're doing, yo, that would be sick. Actually, that might be hella fun. That would be a lot I- of fun. How quickly can we build like a like a simple like NFT marketplace or some shit you have? not I think you've already done that. It's like some some weird shit. Like I'm like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. That video would be a lot of fun because we could have like I could have um, somebody edit it and they could t- and it would be more based on storytelling rather than like a tutorial. Mm. Mm. Oh, dude, that... um, uh, one other thing is like if I'd we be did, so game. Like, yeah. So if we did something like that or like we did a. I don't know, simple blockchain challenges against each other and then see like and time each other, you know? Um, that I might did be a vi- kind of fun. Yeah, I did a video like that with a friend and we, we battled each other with CSS. So we got cha- mm. uh, CSS challenge and, and then, yeah, we did it. And then um, I ended up winning. So it's like an entertaining video. But now if yeah. I did it, I have a lot of Mr. Beast ideas in my head. So I'm like, because <laughs> like instead of one challenge taking 27 minutes, his mm-hmm. challenges each take like 50 seconds, 40 seconds. Right. So I, right. In, in one video, I would just like, we, we, you and I would just do 10 blockchain challenges, you know? Dude, or I, better I, yet, I have somebody who I can pit against you. Oh, fuck. And then you guys do this. <laughs> oh, shit. So like you guys do the fucking blockchain challenge. I become the game <laughs> show host. And whoever wins gets like $10,000. Yo, all right. I'm in. I'm in. Wait, wait. <laughs> I, I know. I know some coders too. Like, uh, yeah, I know some people who could do it. Like, this is my brother. He's, you know, he's been coding for a week. Him and I, we're, we're great competition. Uh, I'll blow yeah. him away and win the ten thousand dollars every single time. So that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> no, but but down. actually, uh, yeah, no, I and uh, yeah, I I know some people who'd be who probably would would destroy me too. Um, dude, that oh, sounds like cool. a ton of fun. Yeah. So how how much that. experience do you have with blockchain? Uh, I've been coding. Uh, like solidity stuff for like the past two and a half years at this point. Wow. Which, which like the thing senior, is like, like senior, senior dude, level though, because like wh- people are starting a month ago. Dude, which is so funny to think about. Yeah. Cause like, uh, you, you talk to like, like a, 
a React developer, right? Or like a, uh, or maybe not React is the best example because React kind of, a JavaScript developer. And I say like, oh, two and a half years. They're like, yeah, I've been coding JavaScript for fucking 20. Yes. <laughs> right. It's uh, yeah. totally different. Yeah. They're, like, crazy. I mean, because the max you can be is like five years, really. Dude, six years. Let, let's talk about the money, dude. If Ethereum developer, Solidity developer, they're coding for half a year, one year, how much money are they making on like if, if they're if they're like um let's say they're in us let's just start there mm -hmm. they're in us they know what they're doing they've been doing it for a half a year a year like what type of salary range are we talking yeah it's it definitely ranges um if you're like super noob stuff it can still be kind of like a normal like developer like it could be like 80 90k like if you're I mean, I mean I'm, we're talking about like pretty much junior level people, yeah. We're we're talking about junior level people. I mean, I and the the thing is, most projects aren't looking for junior level people um, because senior. Well, it, because it's just um, like most projects like need to move quick and they're like building quick. Uh, but the good thing is, like the I think the startups that are like a little bit more open-minded realize that, oh, okay, like if we get a bunch of junior developers, they probably can still build something really sick, right? Like mm -hmm. most junior Solidity developers are learning crazy fucking fast yeah. and are are gonna be learning on the fly and building really cool shit. So yeah, like like low end, I'm gonna say is like 80 to 90. High wow. end is 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 nuts, dude. High end, what like- What are the high ends? I wouldn't be surprised if the average is like, like 150, 170. Uh, wow. I think I think crypto jobs list quoted it a lot lower though. I, I think like a couple of like, here's what people are making quoted at like 120, 130. But yeah. dude, I, dude, I've seen I've seen shit for like 500 plus tokens. Yeah, like um, I don't I don't know how legit those are. Yeah. Um, and I don't I don't personally know anybody who's doing that. I've seen yeah. shit like that. But but yeah, I, I do know people who are doing 180 plus tokens, 200 plus tokens, you know. Um, so that's that's pretty like within the realm of doable. Okay. I don't know what 100, 200 tokens means. What, what does or, mean? Sorry. To, like, like, how, I, like, thought so, about, I thought we were talking about USD, like people make 150,000. Oh, no. Or USD. No, no. Sorry. Like like tokens. 200K, 200K plus tokens. Like 200K plus like the equivalent of a stock options in, in crypto, oh, which is oh. like tokens. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, got it, got it. which, which, and I say like plus tokens because if the, the project sucks, like it tanks and it's like, all right, well, I got nothing for these tokens. These tokens are worth. The project is good. Like, um, yeah. I don't know if you know Alex Becker in the crypto community. He's huge. Oh, I, well, now I feel silly. I don't know Alex Becker. Really? Alex, how do you spell his last name? Um, Alex Becker. So A-L-E-X and then. Mm -hmm. B E C K E R. Okay. So he's more like a influencer slash somebody who talks a lot about crypto. Um, oh shit! Eight hundred thousand followers. Okay, yeah. On YouTube, he's he he should be past a million subs now. Really? Yeah, and like each video he was dropping on crypto, dude, was doing like half a million views, and you could do those style of really? videos too. Um, but like yeah, he just talks about crypto stuff, and he launched his own NFT project. Have you ever heard of Neo Tokyo? I'm not. So, anyways, like his developer that got on it, it now makes like has made over seven figures, like in less than a year. Wow. Yeah, so I feel like some some projects, if you get on that are like good projects, I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of fucking nuts, you know. My friend just like minted a Neo Tokyo, and it's it. Uh, and if he sells it today, it's worth quarter million, and he got it for free. That's that's one of the things that like is really exciting, and it's good about this space that there's like so much. There is a lot of economic opportunity here, and people like get hyped and like, yo, I'm trying to make bank. Yeah. It also is like, uh, it also has a downside where you have all these you 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 get a ton of people who come in and they go, yo, I'm gonna join this project early because, and I want to be like, you know, what this Alex Becker guy did. And they yeah. just get fucking wrecked, and that yes. that always breaks my heart. Or like uh, the thing that happens all the time is like a new protocol launches, and somebody goes, "Oh my god! Like I'm gonna be the first one on this protocol. Like I'm gonna get all these rewards. It's gonna be great." And they just get fucking rugged. Yeah. Um. It, so it, it comes with a downside, and the other downside is that like a lot of people view the industry as like this stupid cash grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which to a lot of people it is, and 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 if that's if that's what gets you into the space, you know, so be that's, it. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. 
dude, I, we, we talked about this, right? We, like, I, I get space. it. Dude, the monkey I, shit, when I'm like <laughs> selling monkeys and making this much money, I'm like, let me start paying attention to this. But then like, I, I came for the monkeys and I stayed for the decentralization, bro. <laughs> dude for for me it was the uh it was a combination of the memes the promise and the money it was like all three like <laughs> nice. like to me like the the memes in this space are hilarious the fact that like yeah. like a super super fucking serious event the the mascot is a half buffalo half fucking unicorn half like pigeon right <laughs> to me that is phenomenal and that's that's eat denver one to me that's phenomenal like Whoa, you have this ridiculous incredible. yeah which you should have came, dude. Next time. Next time. Yeah, I was too late. Um, yeah. Next next year. Next year. Next year. Yeah, eat, eat Denver is super sick. But uh yeah, like we like it's it's this crazy weird I forget where I was going with it. It's this crazy weird community, but yeah, like it's I got into it for the money, for the for the uh for the decentrality and for the memes. And yeah, now that I'm here, I'm like, holy fucking shit. Uh, yeah. there's well it, actually that's not even true because uh I, it was it was even more for the um the, the future because i was like yeah. i was researching smart contracts and i was like holy shit like all these yeah. fucking issues in finance that i saw i'm like holy shit like this yeah. is the answer wow. this is the yeah. fucking answer so yeah so I, I i i i i it caught my attention because of all that shit but yeah i, I was like holy fucking shit because of all like the cool stuff that this technology yeah. enables so See, i mean yeah I, I i totally agree with that like it enables so many cool things I think like, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about is how do you see average users getting into this space, right? So for example, some thoughts at the top of my head are like, you know, um, things like Solana Pay. They just released yep. Solana Pay. You can actually go to a real store, flip out your phone and like just pay with Solana Pay, right? Mm. So that makes it look kind of real world. How do you see it becoming a more... Not, not just for inv people looking to make a quick buck on NFTs, but mm. more people switching into it. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest steps, I, I think the first big pillar to fall is going to be, well, it's, it's already falling, is going to be DeFi, right? Like all these um, investing asymmetries and this unfairness, like all, there's so many advantages that DeFi gives like the common person that I think like that is the the entry point. That's going to be the first thing. I think that's going to be the first thing to go mainstream. Yeah. Some could argue that NFTs have gone mainstream, but I, I don't. I, I think NFTs are great, but like the val the real value I feel like is um, for like for like making people's well being better is more in, in DeFi. Um, yeah. I think NFTs are really cool. I think they're fantastic. Um, but yeah, I think like the the normal person who wants to have a better life. It's DeFi, right? Because they can invest in all these these really cool uh, f uh, financial products. They can invest much easier, yeah. Um, and they can kind of they can have access to this financial world they weren't able to have access before. Um, one one of the things I really did like about Robinhood was they were originally their mission was that as well, and I, I think it still is, but they fucked up a little bit um, mm -hmm. to like give people access to to easily like be a part of markets. Yeah. And I think crypto is really the fulfillment of that vision yeah. uh, with like a provably fair, done in a provably fair way. So I think DeFi, yeah. I think like uh, a lot of the investing, um, like moving away from kind of traditional stocks to to crypto stuff. I think that's kind of the first foray. Um, yeah. And that's one of the first things for. for I mean, once money masses. moves there, pretty much everything that's going to then fall like a domino effect. Right. That's well, that's actually kind of a big, big thing. I think so. Yeah. Why? What, what do you think? Um, I, man, I don't know. Like, honestly, it's definitely a tough one to kind of predict. Like, I, I get certain ideas around NFTs and I'm like, oh, this, like, for example, uh, if you get an NFT to Gary V's Fly Fish Club or whatever he launched, mm -hmm. you could then, now they're launching the service where you could lease it out to other people. So you could own it, but you could lease it out to other people or mm -hmm. let them rent. And I'm like, that's such a cool concept because imagine if for three months, I'm like, you know what? I'm really not using my Netflix subscription, but instead of canceling it, what if I could let somebody borrow it for three months? I don't know. Like that would be pretty that's cool. cool. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the thing that I do cause is anytime like one of my buddies is like, yo, like how do I, how do I crypto? I go, okay, get a mask wallet, 
I'll send right. you I'll send you ten twenty dollars. We'll we'll stick you uh uh we'll stick some money into Ave on Polygon. We'll let you fuck around. The, fee, uh. the fees are super cheap there. You can start playing with DeFi on Polygon, and then boom! Like everyone I've done that with, it's like holy shit! This is so sick. This is so easy. It's like uh, yeah, the the, yeah. the thing that you're talking about, like oh my god, I can I can like literally like move all like a shit ton of money yeah. in like a second. Like are you are you kidding me? Like yes. so that's what I say. I say go play on Ave on Polygon yeah. Network. Have fun. Yeah. Come back to me when you have more questions. Yeah, I think yeah. Like for for me, what I see is, I think the the user experience needs to just be really simplified. So I think of like think, a little bit more. Yeah. It's like think Apple versus yep. like um, I don't know, like a Google computer or like a regular Microsoft computer uh, or or a phone. They they simplified things and they kept taking things away, and the more they took things away. It just made the user experience so easy, and I feel like that's why a lot of people, you know, go after Apple products because they're just simple. You even kind of forget that there's so much technology behind it. I feel right. like with the crypto space, it's it's like there's too many options available. Like I, I go to send money, and then it asks me for my slippage. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I just want to <laughs> buy something. I have no idea what this is, right? And yeah, it'll just yeah. like come, and 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 it's almost like. Right now, it feels like in order to drive a car, you also have to be a fucking car engineer. Like, no, I just want to drive the car. Like, just give me a gas pedal and the whatever. So I feel like when things like MetaMask become a lot easier to sign up for and use, because I, I can't tell my dad to sign up for this. He, there's no way. You know, he won't get it. Or like somebody, like if I even tell my girlfriend, she's on Instagram all day, she's all this, she's a pro boxer, but like, this is too involved in the tech world where she will she will be like super confused setting up a MetaMask wallet. So I feel like when those things become really easy, I feel like a lot more people, in my opinion, would start jumping in because then there would be even a lot less fear. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right. I think user experience is probably going to be one of the biggest things. And uh, I, I forced my, uh, my girlfriend to get a MetaMask. So that's maybe that's the, I was like, yo, you need to do this. Well, although she doesn't, she like got it and like, she hasn't touched it since I, you know, yeah. uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think user once as, as user experience gets better, it'll just get better and better. And that's another reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Teaching the engineers yeah. how to like code. Cause right. it's that they're, they're going to be the ones who are going to build it. Right. They're going to be the yeah. ones who build the user experience and yep. make it easier and friendlier. Yeah. Um, and then I imagine at some points, lots of companies will start making it where, like, I could go to Amazon and buy an USDT. Like, I think, like, once these big mm. fucking companies that we all know and love, like, once that starts happening or YouTube starts sending me AdSense and USDC, like, I feel like when the big player starts moving, I think that might lead to mass adoption. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. So uh, those are kind of my thoughts there. Uh, and I, I think we touched base on solidity and okay, if, mm. if a developer goes into this space, how much money can they realistically make? Um, but also like how much experience does somebody need before they can start applying for jobs? So like, for example, say I'm a developer with one or two years of experience with the traditional full stack development. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty decent. I have a couple of projects on my portfolio and I want to now join the blockchain world. Do I have to wait a couple of years before I can start applying for blockchain jobs? Or no. what's the process there? No. So here's what here's what I usually tell people. And then it could be, I, th I think years isn't a great indicator because it's whatever time frame you can do this in. Here's what I usually think. Step one, take a tutorial, a course. Doesn't matter which one. You can take my free code camp one. It's great. DAP University's got some great ones. Uh, Eat the Block's got some great ones. You know, you can watch all of all of Kazi's videos, uh, what, whatever, I don't care, right? Like do some type of tutorial, get into it. That's step one, get the basics, get like that basics, Solidity, Viper. If you're using Solana, Rust, I don't care. What's Just Viper? Do something. You keep mentioning that. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's it's a it's a Pythonic uh, smart contract language. So it's it's basically the, if Solidity is to JavaScript, Python, or Viper is to Python. So it, you, you can write EVM, you can write e, uh, Ethereum smart contracts in Viper. It's a super sick language too. So, Got it. Uh, uh, it's, it's used a lot less though, like Curve, Yearn.Finance, those are some of the big ones that use it. Uh, but yeah, pick a language, doesn't matter which one, and go and learn something. Once you do that, 
The next thing to absolutely do, especially right now, is join a hackathon and force yourself to like take what you've learned and like build something else. Because you're going to meet a ton of people, you're going to get a ton of skills from going to a hackathon, and you're going to force yourself to kind of leave what I call tutorial hell. Um, so join a hackathon, right? Because uh, that's where you're going to push yourself. You're going to take all the tutorial stuff and you're going to run into real problems. You're going to run into more problems that are outside the tutorial, right? Tutorials are great yeah. and I make a ton of them, but usually when you take those learnings and you go to the real world, there's like, oh, but I want to tweak this like this or yeah. do this and that might be harder. So force yourself to run into those problems and build something, submit something. Um, the other thing that's really cool about these hackathons is there's a ton of money in them right now. Um, so that's also good. You can have the chance to win, but don't really think about like the winnings, really just focus on, okay, I'm here to learn and build something. And then also network. Mm. I've seen tons of projects come out of hackathons and then become like protocols, right? So if you're into that, you could leave a hackathon and uh, become a protocol. So one of the uh, projects from the last Chainlink hackathon, this project struck finance, this was like, maybe four months ago, they just did. They, I, I think they met at the hackathon. I could be wrong. I, I don't yeah. actually, uh, I'd have to double check. But yeah, four months ago, they did the Chainlink hackathon. They just raised $3.9 million. <sighs> so yeah. So like Jeez. this shit moves quick. So if you do well at a hackathon, <laughs> go on, make the protocol. The other thing, yeah. there are headhunters at these hackathons. So if you do really well, maybe you don't even need to apply because someone's going to reach out and be like, yo, um, I want to hire you. There are headhunters at these hackathons. Yeah. Um, but after that, uh, even you know, if no headhunter reaches out to you, then that's when you can start applying. Right after you start building some protocols uh, and start feeling really uh, competent. So maybe that takes you four months. Maybe that takes you a year and a half. Maybe yeah. that takes you three years. Right. Yeah. However long it takes you, but yeah, just start applying along the way. Um, the other question I get a lot is. Internships. Can I go to an internship? Where can I internship? Blockchain and smart contracts are kind of these this wild world where yeah. like your internships are like everywhere. Yeah. And, but they're but they're not traditional internships. To me, you're gonna get a lot lot better um, experience going to like maybe someone's GitHub and trying to work on an issue or something, right? or going to some open source project and say, oh, hey, like, I really like this feature, you know, can I work on this or can I do that? There's all these protocols have grants where they'll give out money for you to work on something and you're gonna get way better experience doing that than like getting someone's coffee as like an intern or whatever, right? <laughs> so so like go out, like use the, the fact that blockchain is so ridiculously open source is like your advantage. It's like, holy shit, there's so many places that I can learn and work with people uh, and learn from other people. So it's like by take, definition, every company, almost every company on the blockchain is open source in that way. So like, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, learn, learn from all. And like the other cool thing is like all of the tutorials that I do are like based off of these like insane protocols because all their code is open source. Yeah. So like, if you want to see, okay, what does Ave do? What does synthetics do? What does compound do? Yeah. Let's the code's right there. Link or uh, we'll pop up the link to the channel in the description. And then also we'll show something on the screen right now. Uh, and I think Patrick Collins, if you, if we just type that in on YouTube, your tutorials and videos should come up. Right. And, um, the, even the one that I started actually learning solidity with is uh, Patrick's video. That's how I know him. It was, I was in Dubai and I went to free code camp. Um, not, I didn't go to free code camp. Actually, I typed in solidity tutorial and then Patrick's popped up with 2 million views and it's just a fucking Woo. banger. Yeah. Like played Dude. it me and my team watched like so many hours worth of it and like learned a ton. So, um, yeah, definitely. And then you saw it was Python and then yeah, you saw it was Python and you're and like, <laughs> Python, like two, three hours in, but like I watched the two, three hours, bro. And, and I was hooked. So I would and highly recommend you guys watch that to learn solidity. Definitely. And we got a JavaScript one with hardhead coming out soon ish, very soon ish. So definitely be sure to check that out. It's going to be sick. Like anybody who like, Oh my god! Like I'm, I'm, I'm filming it right now, dude. Oh my god! It's so fucking sick. It's so That's good. sick. I'm dude, excited I, dude, about that one. I'm excited. Dude, it, I'm excited. If, about if you, that. if you get in this space and you're like, yo, like I'm trying to learn this shit, dude. Like watch one of those two videos because at the end you're gonna be golden. You're gonna be good to go. Like that. 
All right, like I said, watch whatever tutorial and watch whatever tutorial, but if you watch mine and you like actually go through it, you are going to come out the other side fucking swinging ready. Fucking yeah. swinging, right? And so it'll be like 20 oh. hours or something like that. The first one was 16. Yeah. It's going to take you a couple months to actually like watch it and digest, but like, dude, it's like sick. It's so it's good. Worth it. All right. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like we covered a lot of the roadmap of how do you actually become a blockchain engineer or a Solidity developer or whatever. Are there any mm. other parts you want to add to it or you feel like it's pretty good what we have for it so far? I think that's pretty good. It, I mean, the rest of it's kind of like the traditional, you know, keep learning, keep grinding, right? Like uh, if nobody's hiring you, keep learning, keep grinding, keep, keep your GitHub repo is your, um, is your resume, your yeah. GitHub repo. And then also, you know, your, your regular resume is also your resume, but these are the products that I've worked on. This is what I know how to do. Um, something else I usually recommend to people is um, if you are looking for a job, like start writing some articles. Right. Start making a little bit of content. Do some tutorials. Did you work on something really cool? Great. Make it write an article about it. There's yeah. great places like dev.2. You can just rip an article. And now that's kind of like part of your resume as well. Like this is here. Yeah. This is what I know how to do. Uh, and maybe that's a good way to get your name out there. I know that us devs are usually a little bit more shy, but it's <laughs> yeah. still a great way to get out there. And um, and then maybe you just do it. You get the job and then you stop writing. And that's fine, too. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of. Um... I feel like there's a huge demand and the supply is a lot smaller. Like even for us, we were looking for blockchain engineers and we're looking to bring some on Dude, right yeah. now for the team and hire them. And it's like, it's fucking hard. And all the people we're interviewing are like, yeah, I have two months of experience. You know, I started coding like four <laughs> months ago in Solidity. And like, yep. you know, those are some of the best candidates we have. And we're like, like we recently came across a couple that have like one or two years of experience and stuff. And we're like, yo, this is, this is great. Um, one person. Yeah. I'm really excited about, but he's, uh, yeah, currently a senior blockchain engineer at meta and was ex Google. Oh shit. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> and he's been with blockchain since 2013. Um, oh my God. and he wants to work with us. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, why do you want to work with us? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're just YouTubers, dude. Like, um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think, yeah. So, like, he wants to also be in some of the videos. So, he's excited about that. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to say, why Why does he? That I mean, I mean, that's fucking sick, right? Is, is it because of the videos and stuff? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like, of course, nice. we're going to have him on a team. He's going to get paid. Hell yeah. Paid. And so, that's nice. Um, but then on top of that, there's going to be some videos we're going to have him in. And I'm thinking to have him in like some really cool, like epic videos. Um, mm. I got a couple of ideas, dude, like even off this podcast, I would love to brainstorm some video ideas with you. Just like creator, dude. one creator to another creator. Um, dude, yeah. cause I was, I was actually recently feeling like shit, man, I, I want to brainstorm with somebody and I come up with ideas, but most people aren't creators, you know, and like you are. So, um, I will hit you up. I will hit you up. I'm excited about that, actually. Seriously. Um, I love to do this walk too, right by the marina. And, like, I just go on this long walks. And then I just... Like, oh. Dude, a walking meeting. Oh, yeah. I'm game. Yeah. I, I, have, I have to walk 7,000 steps a day because I'm, like, trying to be less fat. So, hell, yeah. That sounds good to Brother, me. Are you fat? You don't look fat. You look, like, jacked. I'm, I'm bigger than I want to be. Uh, I, I told people I was bulking. So, whatever. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> i mean yeah like i feel like you're a fit dude you have the fucking Thanks, gallon of water next to you <laughs> it's yeah the 64 ounce uh the 64 ounce. i gotta i gotta <laughs> <laughs> just walks around with it everywhere dude I, dude i want to be one of those gym guys who who has like the milk carton yeah and, like, that's his water bottle <laughs> I, th I think those are fantastic so this is like a little bit less but yeah still like bigger than my fucking head dude so. like we should just get jacked and have tank tops and just <laughs> a gallon of milk and writing smart contracts under time crunches dude, dude one of my uh <laughs> one of the one of the videos that i have planned i, I want to do some weird shit at the gym and then like have like a laptop where i'm like uh cause, so there's this new framework that just came out foundry it's it's rust based it's super fast it's really uh, powerful and like the joke go ahead i was gonna say you write in rust uh, no, so it, it's it's Rust based. It's command line based. So you just do on the command line. You don't have to actually do any Rust stuff. I mean, I have written Rust stuff, but 
But yeah, the joke that I was going to make was like, oh, it's so powerful. And I'm like fucking deadlifting or some shit. <laughs> but then I was like, that's, I don't, I don't know if that's, that's too fucking corny. <laughs> yeah, this framework is too good. This yeah, framework is too powerful. <laughs> you know, this happens with creators, right? Like you'll think of an idea and then you go, I don't know if it's too corny. And like when you execute it, sometimes it's like way shittier than you had imagined. And it's like really yep. disappointing. You're like, what the fuck? Like I really thought I was going to yep. be funny, but like now I don't even get it. Like what's the joke? Um, it happens to me all the time. But I'm one sure thing it does. I, yeah. One thing I thought about is like you can't ever give up on that part of yourself because that's the true creator. And like yep. that shit will breed so much lack of confidence in yourself when you keep having ideas and you not, you keep not doing them. And then, like, you just keep getting less and less confident as a creator. So I feel like it's like even if you think it's the dumbest shit or whatever, it's like just go fucking do the deadlift with the laptop in your hand. Like, this is fucking powerful. Uh, like, make it a 20-second short and drop it, you know? But, like, that way you just keep increasing your confidence in, like, what you set, what you thought you were going to do, you actually do it. All right, Kazi, I'm taking those words to heart. Next video I drop, I'm going to be fucking deadlifting and doing some weird shit. Dude, Let's my my Python tutorial, <laughs> my Python tutorial that broke two million views. I mm -hmm. had this random idea that I'm gonna be by the ocean and I'm just gonna be waving the laptop in one arm, like with one hand, and I'm just like talking and I'm like doing push-ups and shit. When I'm teaching for loops, I'm like, here's what? a range of ten, and then I did ten push-ups, and then I got up with a laptop and I'm just like coding, and it goes back to the coding screen. It's like fucking crazy. What? That's phenomenal. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, now I want to do I want to do random push-ups when I'm coding. That sounds fucking sick. Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> I'm imagining like um, like doing fucking bench presses and then like sitting up like from the bench press and like a, a table sliding over to like and then you're just like all right now it's time to code for my fucking rest. That shit is funny, dude. It's like Ridiculous. I'll tell you right when I was watching your tutorial, I'm like oh like another fucking professor person teaching shit you know with green screens and i was like oh this is gonna be cringy and i like watching it but then like you were dropping some references and the, also the way you speak i'm like this guy sounds like a savage i'm like i like this guy <laughs> and i'm like this is fucking cool i'm like i want to learn this so it was weird like it made me want to learn as i like bought into more of who you were you know and so i feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. If you just in, like interdisperse like random shit that you like in the tutorials, f like whether it's chess or League of Legend references or like gym references, I think it will it'll just make people like you and connect with you a lot more. Kazi, we gotta. So when we get on these brainstorming calls, like, well, I'll I'll give you all the solidity knowledge, and then you just keep feeding me the YouTube shit. I'm Let's I'm with go. it. This sounds great. <laughs> you keep giving me the tricks of the trade, man. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where we're headed. Um, all right, bro. I think this was phenomenal. If we ever do one in the future, I think like we'll just do a live one because it'll be. I think we'll uh, we'll take questions and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Well, cause yeah, I, I thought we riffed here really well. So I'm, yeah, I'm game. I think, I think there was no like, uh, performance issues. Like, yeah, I think this would be a lot of fun to just rip live to issues, dude. performance. Like issues. We're about to jump into a blue chew sponsored ad or something. <laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, what is it? What did, uh, Ray Kroc? No, fuck. I forget it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. You have performance issues. Drink this creatine, sponsored by G Fuel. <laughs> yeah, we should get sponsors on these videos, man. Get, get fucking, get, get G Fuel or Red Bull, and the two of us just like go fucking nuts for a solid 60 ah. I'm game. <laughs> ah, you want to talk to my contracts? I got you! That would be sick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You want to have the best fucking code of your life? Dude, I'm game. Yeah. I did one video on like TikTok, it like blew up, and it's like. Mm -hmm. And it starts, and I'm just like, I stand up, and I'm going all crazy, and I'm like, Sheesh! And, <laughs> and yes. Like, and then the in the caption we wrote like, when a JavaScript developer like uh, discovers React for the first time, it's like, <laughs> and he's like rolling this up, and he goes like this, and yeah, it's just yeah. like a React logo, and he like injects it into his fucking arm. Fuck and like yeah, that yeah. one like blew up and like got like almost a million views and i'm like yo let's we got to do more of these <laughs> hell yeah man so so wait so do you edit this too or is it just like all right you just rip it um I, yeah we will edit it i have a team of editors okay. who will edit it all right cool all um, right so that that's why we're like all right we're 
going to make the audio and everything really good. So yes. makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we did it like this. So we'll have an yeah. editor that like find the thing that'll be like the most hook, like that'll hook the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then like we'll start it off with that. The video punch in and punch out. And it'll be like super entertaining. Um, yeah. So normally I ask people what their biggest regret is or something crazy. And then like we make that the mm. hook. That's what I did with the co-founder of Twitch. Like we made the the hook. Oh shit! What was his What was his biggest regret? Um, I forget what his was, but he, one of the things that he had like these L's on is he's like he he started this company, Atrium, took seventy five million dollars and like lost all the money. You know, so like we hooked the video with that. Ryan Carson, when I interviewed him, I asked him is one of his and like he passed up on a hundred million dollar deal. And he said, oh no, he turned it down. And then he's like, fuck, like should have said yes. You know, so like we started that one off like that. Um, so in this one, we didn't have any drama. So we won't have like a crazy oh, hook. Shit. This one is more positive, entertaining, you know. Pos positive's good. Yeah, we were pretty positive talking about crypto and stuff. Crypto is <laughs> the future. Woo. Well, I didn't say that with any energy. That's, that's not a great hook. It's also, not, it's also kind of a boring hook. Crypto is the future. Oh. Yeah, it should, it should just start well, off with me going like, Patrick, um, why do all the crypto people dislike you? And then you start <laughs> answering it. Get 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 the get the controversy for the hook right there. I'm with it. <laughs> why does the crypto community hate you? <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if we said why does the crypto community love you, that's not a fun. That's not. A we should have hook. a stream. Uh, we should do a stream next time. That's like mm. um. We're going to keep streaming until Patrick laughs at a blockchain meme. And then it's just like we just keep it rolling and we just keep showing you random memes. And then when you finally laugh, we just end the stream. Oh, I'm, dude, I'm game. That's, <laughs> <all they're all laughs> fun. that's a, that's a ridiculous. All right, dude, I can, I can be stone face. Yeah, don't, you're going to be testing my stone face. <laughs> it's like nothing cracks you. Um, all right, we'll, we'll do something like that, dude. I'm excited. I'm I feel like yeah, there's Kelsey. a lot that we can fucking do. Um, dude, agreed. I love you, bro. So I'm going to stop the recording. Guys, thank you for watching. I love your beautiful face. Um, Patrick, should they subscribe? What should they do right now? Yeah, uh, 100%. Go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe. <laughs> uh, Patrick Collins. No, just kidding. Like, go learn blockchain. Go learn blockchain. That's what y'all should do. Y'all should go take a tutorial. I don't give a shit what tutorial. Go do tutorial and then, like, exit tutorial hell go to a hackathon like make it make the commitment right now watching this stream with me and kazi yes, like sir. you're gonna go learn okay. this shit Ka dude kazi's doing a ton of videos like this is this is like if you're like oh like i wonder if I this is your call to action like this, this is, is the future. fucking universe saying hey like this is web3 is what's up so so That's go learn cool. blockchain free code camp like uh kazi uh eat the blocks Dappy, who cares like go learn web3 go do a hackathon Come join us. It's a ton of fun here. Yes, sir. There you go. Mm -hmm. And smash the fucking like button. To the yeah. More people. Smash the fuck. Yo, subscribe to Clever Programmer if you haven't already. What the fuck are you doing here if you haven't subscribed yeah. already? All right. With that said, guys, we love your beautiful face. If you watch it up until this point, just comment. Like, whatever comment you leave, just add in the word blue frog in there. That's how I always <laughs> know that you and you watch this shit. There you go. Repping the blue frog. Um. Uh -huh. That's how we'll know. So thank you guys. We love your support and uh, we'll see you in the next video. What it do, what it does, where you been, where you was, what it ain't, what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know.